This is episode 48 of the Rise Up Podcast. We're a morning radio show hosted by Steve, Therese, and Tim on Family Life, a network of stations across New York and Pennsylvania. Our podcast is a weekly conversation that will help you think and grow in your faith. If you haven't already, subscribe today so you don't miss a single episode and find out more about our show at familylife.org. Facing a whole new day is a lot easier when you remember that God is in charge. You're listening to Rise Up on Family Life. Tis the season you are packing under the Christmas tree with lots of presents. Mm -hmm. And we'll spend hopefully a while on Christmas morning getting to open all those gifts. And then we'll forget about most of them. Isn't that something we spend so much time and money and energy, you know, getting all these presents and then most of them are forgotten. Sometimes, though, you look back in your life and there is a truly, truly memorable gift. You guys are going to think that this is really, really silly. okay? but I grew up not really affluent. And so the kind of joke about socks and underwear. Uh was like a reality in our house. Like you just always got socks mm-hmm. and underwear at Christmas because you mm-hmm. needed new ones at that point. And sure. it was like, well, just wrap it up, make it a gift. But one year, instead of giving me socks and underwear, my very creative, artistic mother gave me a little box that looked like a jewelry like item would come in it, like a little necklace or something. And when I opened it up, attached to inside the lid and inside the box, she had created a cutout clothesline of undergarments. And so when I opened the box, there were little socks and underwear that spanned from the lid to the box. And you know what's so funny is I'm sure at that moment I was like, really? You know, because it was like socks and underwear. But of all the gifts that I wish I still had, Mm. that is at the top of the list. Mm. I don't know what happened to that little box. I'm kind of hoping that someday, you know, when I'm going through my mom's stuff, I'm going (laughs) to find it somewhere that she's got it tucked away. Because, boy, I would love to just look at that every Christmas because it was, you know, it was a little bit of her and her creativity and just thinking, how can I make something that's mundane, Mm -hmm. be fun, and maybe... It'll encourage you that when you've got little kiddos home for break and it's like so many hours that need to be filled with fun entertainment, it doesn't have to cost a lot of money. Sometimes Mm, the most memorable things you can do with your family are the silliest. You just got to inject a little bit of creativity into it. So maybe that's the gift there is the idea that creativity sure cures a lot of things. I love that. Mm-hmm. It's and that's how it goes with gifts. It's so it's it's I mean it's a cliche to say it's what it's a thought that counts, but it's not just a cli- like that's true. It's what's behind it and it's what's between the giftee and the gift receiver that get what's going on there. And that's where my most memorable gift comes in for me. So you know I like stars, I like astronomy, I like space, and this star map has got to go at the top of my list of most memorable, most meaningful gifts I've ever received. And no, it's not because of the star geek in me that I loved this star map, but I'm just going to explain this. It's kind of unique. My wife, Trinity, gave me this map of the night sky on a particular, it was, it was where the stars were on a particular date at a particular location, what the night sky would have looked like if you had looked up. Hmm. She had this star map framed, printed out, this precise location, precise time where the stars were, because that was the day, that was the time when I first told her I loved her when Hmm. we were dating and when she told me she loved me. That's where the stars were when that was said. And she found this clever thing online where you could get that printed out in this beautiful print. And, you know, we say, you know, sometimes you look like, how do you find a gift that says, I love you? Well, that that does it right there. That was such a meaningful thing to get that from her. And uh, just a reminder of where we were at that time in lives and in our lives, we were dating at that point. And to kind of have that moment, maybe it's not a moment for everybody that you remember, but for us, it was a very specific moment to make that intentional choice to use those words that you don't take lightly, those three words that mean so much in our language, I love you. And so that gift from my wife of the night sky, when we first told each other we loved each other, that's that's got to go at the top of my list. You know, it's interesting. All None of us shared uh, what our gifts were before we uh, are recording this podcast. And it's already been touched on a few times that uh, it's not the amount of money that 
put into it. It's the meaning behind it. And, and that's what, uh, that's what, that's what it's all about. The, the meaning and the, the thought. And mine was, again, not a, uh, monetary, memory of a, of a gift. It was on these podcasts before and, and other times on Family Life, I've talked about how Audrey's in our marriage, which is now almost 34 years, almost ended uh, back around, it was like 2000, 2000, in that time frame. And there was a rough couple of years where we our marriage almost didn't make it, just hanging by the thread, and God put it back together again. But it was the first Christmas, and we were beyond the worst part, but just beginning to to get back in and, and building the relationship again. And our kids were, uh, I want to say, at that time, in the 8, 9, 10-year-old range. So they understood things, and we explained things to them uh, as we went through the tough times, uh, age appropriate. But I'll, I can just picture myself sitting down on Christmas morning, and there we all were around. We haven't opened any gifts yet, but we were all sitting around, the, the four of us. And, and I knew in my head that this scene right here with the four of us sitting down for Christmas morning uh, was maybe, you know, a couple of years before that might not be a reality. Right. And I remember sitting down with them. And before we opened any gifts, I looked them all in the eye and I said, and it took me a while to say this mm. because it uh, uh, there was many tears shed there. But I said, you know, I enjoy getting gifts as much as anybody. I think we all enjoy receiving gifts. I mean, that's just great. I mean, I love things and things are great. And but that's not the focus. I said, I can never remember a better Christmas than as we sit here right now, you talk about enjoying the moment. I said, just us being able to be together as a family, as one, um, you can't you can't give me and God can't give me a better gift than what I have right here sitting with the four of us. So uh, mm. when when you, we asked the question of like, what's your greatest Christmas gift? That instantly came to my mind because it's still to this day. I can picture myself being right where we were, looking at their faces and saying that. And uh, again, not monetary, but it's a gift that uh, I was so thankful to God for right. what he had done in our marriage. What I love about that, Steve, is that it's such a redemption story. Mm -hmm. You know, you have what was broken that God put together. And that's really what God does. He redeems. And that's really the point of Christmas, right? right. Well, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. And and the gift giving, the idea of giving a gift and how the greatest gifts, the ones that we remember the most are the ones that touch on love for us. And I'm saying this to myself, I'm, I am begging us not to hear this as a cliche, that the, that love is the gift of Christmas. That's why we have Christmas. It's God saying, I love you in the most real, tangible, possible way that could ever have been expressed. It's the gift of God himself to us. It's Jesus who was born in the stable. And it's just, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. There's no other way that you can say, I love you unless you're giving of yourself to somebody else. And it's just amazing for each one of us, those gifts that stuck out the most, they're the ones about the people who loved us and how they showed us they loved us. Mm -hmm. God loves us more than anything. How did he give us a gift to show us he loved us? He came himself. He did it himself to live among us, to die for us, to raise again for our hope. And it's trusting in him where we get that other gift, Steve, like what you talked about, being together with family. Well, God purchased that by his love too. We're together with our family in him forever because we've trusted on him and his gift of salvation. That's that's where Christmas starts. That's where Christmas ends. That's what it's all about. It's all about his love, his free gift for us. Thanks for making us part of your morning routine. It's Rise Up with Steve, Therese, and Tim on Family Life. I feel like I'm flirting with danger. Ooh. Flirting with danger. It oh. is December 21st, and I have not sent out all of my Christmas cards yet. Oh, that's I did danger. Do them, yeah, yeah. I, I did them in stages this year. Like, I sorted the spreadsheet by people with zip codes the furthest away. So, like, spreadsheet. All Ooh, of, well, serious. yeah. Doesn't everybody have a Christmas card spreadsheet? Uh, no. No. 
Wow. Okay. <laughs> so, like all the Texas people, they already have their cards. Of the Florida they do. people, That's what you know, the spreadsheet says. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Of course. Look. Okay, <laughs> There's a reason you're not on my Christmas card list. Okay. <laughs> but Tim is for now. Okay. So right now, the only cards I still have to send are people who like live in town. So I think I'm okay. Um, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna try to. I don't know. Maybe later tonight, get them done. But if somebody says like, oh. Oh, weird. Didn't get a Christmas card from you. I already have, you know, a good excuse. Thanks to Professor David Cummings. Oh. Uh, he is a nanotechnologist. Oh. Yes. And um, back in 2010, he made a Christmas card that is one one millionth the size of a traditional card. Wow. A and millionth? So one, one. It's like you obviously can't see with a human eye. Like it's wow. a microscope thing. He's a nanotechnologist. Hello. Okay. Um, and so like if Steve Smith were to say on December 27th or something, I, I don't remember getting a card from you. I'm going to say, <laughs> are you sure you didn't overlook it? Like it's pretty small. <laughs> it's pretty small. <laughs> They're morning people because they love mornings and people. It's Rise Up with Steve, Therese, and Tim on Family Life. Those Christmas movies, oh, they're so cheesy and it makes us feel so good, doesn't it? Because when the snow falls in a Christmas movie, you know, that means somebody's just fallen in love. I mean, it can hardly mean anything else when the snow is falling. (laughs) It always is an indicator. Okay, but what about our own real lives? It's funny. We expect the snow in movies to be something amazing is happening. And in our own lives, we expect the snow to just be inconvenient, mostly, especially on a Christmas week when you're looking at traveling and you see snow. No, you don't expect any first kisses to be happening when those flakes are falling. You expect to be getting behind on your travels. At least I know that's how I'm feeling. So I'm I'm challenging myself. No, I know nobody's life is as perfect as a Christmas movie, but I'm challenging myself to believe, don't I have something better as a Christian? Don't I have the assurance that, yeah, when the snow is falling, okay, maybe it's not a picture-perfect scene every time, but but God's still at work and God's still in the director's chair? Yeah, maybe it's not going to be that uh, perfect situation like it always is in the movies, but I don't want to let Christmas go by without seeing those miracles God's still directing. We hope the rest of your day is just as much fun as this. You're listening to Rise Up on Family Life. Beware the big blue box. Oh, oh. boy. Any, oh, any, boy. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> any thoughts on what the big blue box might the, be? It's a recycling container. Um, no, not quite. I mean, you, you drive down the street out of sight of a certain building. For your convenience, you see a big oh. blue box. Oh, the, is the, it a... the letters, the the post, the post office box? Oh, because my next guess was a porta potty. <laughs> well, Tim's are much more accurate. <laughs> However, on Teresa's answer, still so Steve, beware. Why don't you tell the big us blue box? Why about that other um, one? Yeah, let's. Okay, so the mailbox is what you're talking. I about. I never thought about this because I've used it many times. Uh-huh. It's convenient. Sometimes you don't have any choice if it's after hours, but I've done it even in the middle of the day because it's like I don't want to park the car and go into the post office. Mm-hmm. I'll just drop it in there. I didn't realize that this was something that's going on and on more and more. People are stealing things out of the box. From the box? From Isn't the box. Lock? Yeah. How? I mean, you can get in there somehow, I guess, with a, a grabber wow. or something. Oh. What they're doing. Oh, I know what grabber. it is. They're taking, a che- they're taking checks mm. and actually washing them and redoing the checks. So it's it seems like it might be rare, but it's happening more and more. Oh. So it just maybe you might want to think about that, especially if you're putting something valuable in the big blue box. Things were, when I was a kid, uh, we used another way of doing it. Also a little dangerous at times, but, you know, it seemed to get there okay. The Pony Express. Oh. We used the Pony Express back in our day. It's amazing what you can do with a bag of carrots. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> or just put it in a sleigh. I don't know. Hey, beware of the big blue box. Not what Therese said. It's Steve, Therese, and Tim helping you to rise up on family life. A friend you can turn to. Oh, the nosy Nellies, they're ruining Christmas. If you have kids or a spouse who likes to be a little snoopy this time of year and see what they're getting for Christmas, I've got the world's best hiding place. Are you ready for this? Because most people look in the bedroom closet. That's just like the place, okay? In the luggage. Oh, that is good. Like if you keep suitcases in your closet, maybe in the basement, (laughs) in the attic, unzip. 
put the presents oh, inside. They can be all wrapped up or whatever. Zip it shut. Now, the best part is if you have luggage that locks. Oh, oh good really luck. Good. Now, you little nosy Nellies. Oh. <laughs> of course, make sure you know where that key is on Christmas right. morning. Yeah, Otherwise, true. be like, I got oh, you some goodness. luggage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the luggage. Merry Christmas. It used to be the best place to hide things until oh. just a few minutes ago. <laughs> 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 right, right. That's oh, true. Man. May the blessings of the Lord be with you in all that you do today. This is Rise Up on Family Life. You love Christmas. You even love Christmas music. But sometimes you can't be troubled by lyrics and melodies. That's why Rise Up Records presents If You're Merry and You Know It, Holidays. From classics like Jingle Bells and Sleigh Ride, to more complex arrangements like this. Carol of the Bells. If you're merry and you know it, holidays is the perfect gift to unwind and relax by the fire. Just listen to this gem. Oh, little town of Bethlehem. Oh, one of my favorites. You want to give a standing ovation after just one listen. If you're merry and you know it, holidays. It's not sold in stores, because <laughs> we just made it up.